Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a SRV training video, not only for everyone else out there, but for the Simbad player group, which I am a part of. Okay, the first thing, for using the SRV to gather prospecting materials, first you need to know what you need. I need phosphorus and manganese. So uh, you're going to go to your system map, and you're going to find a planet which we're going to be doing Lesty 4B. Then if you scroll down with this tab right here, with kind of like the backwards flag, you can see the planet materials. Here we got phosphorus and manganese, decent percentage of each. So that's going to be our target. So we're going to go to Lesty 4B. Also, look down and make sure that you have SRVs available. I have two, so that's good. comply. Frameshift drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. Uh, you will notice that the, f the farther you are from the planet, the faster you're able to go. So it can be faster to go directly away from the atmosphere instead of at an angle. It doesn't save you a whole lot of time, but when you're going almost 3,000 light seconds away, it can save you a minute or two. There's one more thing I could check before I try landing on the planet. Uh, Earth masses will tell you the gravity of the planet. It's 0 .0002, so there is next to no gravity on that planet, which is really nice considering I'm in a Corvette, so it'll make landing a bit easier. Um, if you don't like watching the journey, feel free to skip ahead a minute or two. It probably won't be that long. Um, one thing that I can cover here is in your inventory you have synthesis and you have SRV repair, refuel, and ammunition. Ammunition is not that important, but for repairing you just need iron and nickel 
as you can see I have five repairs available I used to have more but I just got doing some engineer stuff so I used a lot of my iron and refuel you need sulfur and phosphorus which I'm about to use all of that phosphorus so that's one of the reasons why I'm gonna get more while I'm here and then I also need manganese and ammo is sulfur and phosphorus Oh, that's interesting. Refueling and ammo take the same materials. Two sulfur, one phosphorus, and then the fuel is one of each. Uh, maybe I should be looking where I'm going instead of playing with that. And let's not slam into the planet. I'll just go around it a little bit. I do want to land on the light side of the planet, so it's a little easier to see. And that looks like a very rocky and mountainous planet, so this, this will be an interesting video. That is not a very smooth planet to be driving around on. Orbital flight engaged. I'm just gonna try and head to a somewhat flat area. There's not too many of them on this planet. Uh, I need to go to the side. Coming in too steep. There we go, much better. There's some really big mountains on this planet here. But I'm in decently flat area, so this should be pretty nice. And I'm gonna put some pips into my shields just in case I whack the ground a little hard. And now your radar will turn into a kind of a landing radar where you can see what's directly under you while you're trying to land. Now you can see my alignment is okay. Um, just in case you're not fam familiar with landing, like if you see in the middle the arrows are pointing up, that means you need to turn up until your alignment is okay. If you're off to a side, you'll see on the sides it's telling you to rotate a certain direction. You can just follow that until it says alignment is okay.
Now, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people make is they... You need to send your ship away. I mean, yeah, it's a beautiful ship, I love seeing it, but you gotta send it away. Because it can mess with your radar a little bit. Alright, now... There's nothing on radar, so we'll go into kind of an empty area until we see something. Alright, now as you watch the radar... I basically put it to my 12 o'clock. As the scanner goes across, you'll see kind of like a broken signal but you'll s the lighter part of the signal you see two two brighter lines with kind of a space in between them we call that a double line head for the center of that signal and as you get closer the signal will clump together to form a solid signal the farther away you are the more broken the signal will be Maybe it would help if I put more pips into my engines so I could fly a little bit better. Now as you can see the signal is starting to form a solid double line. You only want to pay attention to the brighter part of the line. Now you see how it's split up into two? That means there are two rocks. There's three different types of signals, a single, a double, and a triple line. The less lines there are, the more rare the materials you'll get from them. So we'll head to this left one. Also, as it scans over that signal, you'll hear a specific sound. And here's our first rock. Iron, nickel, and phosphorus. We're here for phosphorus. Um, as you can see, low gravity, big time. Might help if I would target it, too. Oh, wait, I did. My bad. Uh, I'm a little low on iron, so I'll go ahead and grab that. I don't particularly need nickel at the moment. But now you go over, and you see the other rock over here. The signal is kind of mixed with another signal, so you just have to try and pay attention to where the second rock is as you're getting to the first one. Manganese! There we go. It's gonna fly, so I'll try flying too. How about that? Grab that material in flight. Now as you can see in front of me, there is a... Ch that's a triple line. And it's pretty broken, so that means it's a little far away. But as we get closer to it, it'll form a solid line. Like right here, you can s you can even see it very nicely. Right in front of me, it's a small, solid triple line. That means it's pretty much right in front of me, probably right over this hill. Or over the next hill. Now you can see that the signal's getting really small. That means it's right here. Literally right here. Carbon. It's not something I need.
Alright, now it looks like there's a very broken up double line signal in front of me. It's very faint, you can barely see it, but you can see it. You can see from my tracks, I'm literally heading right back the way I just came. But that's fine, it's the, just the way the rocks work. A lot of times you can just go back and forth in a straight line collecting rocks. But now you can see that the double line is starting to form a solid line, and looks to, looks like to my right there's a single line signal straight that way. It's also broken up, but we'll get this double line one first. Nickel, chromium, and carbon, nothing that I need. So I'll go towards this single line let your scanner go over it a few times and try and head for the center of it. Without losing control of the SRV. And you can already see that it's starting to form a nice solid line right across the scanner. I seem to have flown over it. Alright, it says that it's right in front of me, and it is. It's right there. Tellurium and manganese. Tellurium's decently rare, so we'll go ahead and grab that as well. Uh, I th yeah, it's up there flying around. Got the tellurium. I'll just get the manganese on the contacts. It's right there. Using your contacts menu is an easy way to see what materials you got and then you can target which one you want to get. If there's no signals, head for an open area on your radar and as you move signals will start to come up. Also a little tip that I noticed a lot of people don't know is if you turn off drive assist you go faster. Let me turn it on real quick. Now, drive assist is like your normal flight controls. Whenever you set a speed, you'll sit there and you don't have to hold down W or whatever you use if you use a joystick. If you throttle up all the way with four pips on engines, you're going to get to around 31, 32, maybe even 33 meters per second. And, that, you know, that's about all you're going to get out of it. But if you turn off drive assist and then you hit the gas, you're going to go all the way up to 36 to 37 meters per second. I'm at 37 right now. As soon as I turn on drive assist, my speed just goes through the floor. And you'll see my speed is capping out at 31. Oh my god. Okay, not what I had in mind. I did not I did not see this coming.
that actually went pretty well, but wow. Very, very big hole. And I stumbled upon a, <coughs> a nice solid triple line signal. Pretty much right in front of me. It's right down here. It's right here. Sulfur, got manganese, cool. But of course it's flying because there's no gravity on this planet. So you can just fly up to grab it. I thought I saw another signal when I was cruising there. Looks like a very broken double line way out there. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. So I'll head back up this way. And again, as you get a little bit closer to it, you can see it will start to form a solid signal. But that's definitely a double line. It was barely on the scanner. You could tell that it was a double line. Look for the, the highlighted parts of the line. You see like a top and a bottom that's highlighted, but the center of it's kind of darker. That's how you know it's a double line. But as you get closer, it'll form a solid signal, clearly a double line. As the signal gets smaller, it means you're getting close to it. It's right in front of me, I can even see it. It's gold, looks purdy, but it's only an outcrop. Phosphorus, I need you. You're flying, so I'll fly. Gotcha. Alright, cool. Okay, I failed that one. Terribly. I'm just gonna roll and roll and roll and roll. <laughs> and I roll right into a nice big double line signal. Look at that. Sorry, it's kind of hard not to screw around in the SRV, because it's really fun to drive. Sulfur, nickel, and iron. Nothing that I need. Um, it looks like there's another double line signal out there. So I'll head towards it. There you go, how about them apples? Nice solid double line right in front of me. Can't miss it. And it looks like there's two rocks, one on the left side of the radar, one on the right. Um, to my far right, I have another signal, so I'll get the left one first.
Carbon, nickel, iron, phosphorus. There we go. It's flying, so I'll fly. And got it. <laughs> I thought I was going to miss that for a second. Alright, now... Double line is straight this way. Phosphorus, there we go. It's flying. Okay, I missed that one. No, I didn't. Okay, well, I, I kind of did miss it, but I got it on the way down. Alright, now here's a signal that confuses a lot of people. You see a double line with another double line on top of it. That does not necessarily mean that there is a rock in that direction. If you see lines on the top of the scanner, that can mean that there is a ship or there is a structure, like a little outpost there. Sometimes there can be a rock on the way there, and you know, that signal's just behind it, but not all the time. Yep, there's a rock on this one. Tungsten, manganese, and tellurium. That's a nice one. Alright, now we'll go check out this signal, just so everyone sees what it is. And as always, as you get closer, it forms a smaller, more solid line. Ooh, look at the radar. Looks like I might have to fight here, so I'll put some sips and pips into weapons and systems. And let's see, these are wanted skimmers, so we'll take them out. Alright, now that I've killed the sentries, I can see what we got here. Got palladium, platinum, resonating separators, and palladium. Now, SRVs only have two cargo capacity, so I can only grab two of these. Um, I think I might go with the palladium. Grab that palladium. Platinum can be used for engineers. Chemical distillery. That's a material, so I can grab that. Uh, nerve agents. That's legal salvage? Okay. Palladium. There we go. Got you. Cargo is full. What else do we have here? Some, nothing else really worth getting. And it seems I stumbled across a triple line signal, so I'll head over here. It's very broken up, but as always, as you get closer, it forms a more solid line.
There's some phosphorus. Whenever it's done flying. Okay, I missed it. Alright, I have a, a triple line signal here, and then to the right of it I have a double line, but that leads back towards that sentry area, so I'll just head toward the triple line, because I know that's actually something I can get if I don't lose control of the SRV. Alright, you can see that it's split off to two different signals, so there is two rocks here. Grab one and then make sure you remember where the other one is. There's some more phosphorus. Gotcha. And this other rock seems to be right next to me. Ah, uh, sulfur, sulfur. I might as well grab one. Alright, now I noticed when I first got here there was that single line signal out there. There's actually two of them. The one on my right is farther away because the line is more broken. So I'll head for this one. Now it does head back toward that skimmer area, but there was no single line there whenever I was there, so I know this is a rock that has just spawned. And there she is. Got some manganese once it's done flying. And there's a double line signal right in front of me as well. That hurt. sulfur. Not exactly things I needed. But let's see what I got now. Oh, I kind of skipped over everything I was trying to find here. Alright, I'm at 33 phosphorus and 40 manganese. I have room for a little bit more, but that would just make the video longer. I can recall my ship now. There's my beautiful Corvette. I 
such a beauty, isn't she? Alright, I'm going to try something here. Hopefully it works the first time. Hopefully. Look at that. <laughs> That's the cool thing about low G planets. You can just drive on your ship. I can see my three my three crew slots in there. Such a beautiful ship. And it looks like my SRV is levitating on the front of my Corvette. Alright, well, I think that'll conclude the SRV training video. That's really about all there is, so I'll see you guys next time.